stars with very, couldn't be more different points of view about everything from the economy to the stock market. Lee Munson is founder and chief investment officer at Por Portfolio LLC, and Peter Schiff is CEO and chief global strategist at Euro Pacific Capital. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Um, Lee, let me start with you. You think the economic indicators are showing that we're moving in the right direction? Well, I do, and I think that you have to look at what's been happening since the bottom of the market back in March in 2009. We were at a deficit spending of almost 11% back then, and last year we were close to 8%. So we are spending less, and that's important for the stock market because people are concerned that if the U.S. government spends less money, that's going to derail the economy. They already have been spending less money, and the market continues going higher. Corporate profits continue to move up. All right. Now, Peter, I know he said about 10 things there that you're going to disagree with. But let me just pick on one, which is the growth of the economy. Uh, Jamie Dimon, uh, who is pretty much of a realist, Jamie Dimon sees the economy getting better. He, he's against regulation, against bigger government like you and I are, but he does see the economy getting better, growing at 3%. Is Jamie Dimon an idiot? I mean, he's, he's a pretty well, smart guy, no? He may not be an idiot, but he's wrong about the economy. I wonder what Jamie Dimon was saying about the economy in 2007. I'm sure he thought it was growing quite nicely back then. He was wrong then, and he's wrong now. You know, the economy is not recovering. It's getting sicker. The Federal Reserve and uh, Congress are preventing a real recovery. A real recovery would mean we spent a lot less. Consumers would be spending less. Government would be spending less. Interest rates would be a lot higher. We would be saving our money. We would be inv investing. We'd be paying off debt. We'd be producing. You'd see the trade deficit coming down, the current account deficit coming down. None of this is happening. All we're doing is delaying the pain with QE. And you mentioned earlier whether or not QE3 was coming. Yeah. Unfortunately, it is coming. And if it, did, if it doesn't come, we're going to have a collapse much worse than 2008. But unfortunately, that's part of the cure. We have serious structural imbalances that need to be corrected. And in order to correct them, the banks are going to have a hard time. The government's going to be forced to dramatically cut spending, maybe even restructure the debt. Lee, what about that? What's wrong with the apocalypse now theory? Well, you know, I'm really not into, you know, radical in-game theories. I love what Peter has to say because it is a warning for us to change our ways. But the bottom line is that we have been changing our ways, you know, and just look at, you know, just take a look at gold and take a look at the S&P 500 from those March lows back in 2009. Look at a chart. You know, basically they've gone up together. They've had basically the same performance, only the S&P really has, you know, provide, you know, they make things, there's real things. Everybody's so concerned about jobs. Everybody's concerned about are they the right jobs? I would say we have to start someplace. And it's great to talk about what could happen into the future if we don't do these things. But the bottom right. line, we are cutting yeah. well, the amount I of mean, spending. I, the ahead, real I don't see how you up. can argue we've mended our ways. I mean, if you and if we add jobs we that make us poorer, if we add, no, if we add more well, jobs that just consume and don't produce and we're deeper in debt, we're actually it's actually counterproductive. And sure, if you overlay no, a chart between gold and the S&P. Let Peter talk for a sec. Go yeah, ahead, Peter, if, if finish you your over, point. If you overlay a gold chart with the S&P 500 for the last 10 years, you, know, you have huge returns in gold. You're making nothing in the S&P. Recently, the S&P has gone up. But, I mean, this is just a, you know, a long-term bear market in terms of the stock market in gold. And We're Lee, in a bear market. You know, that's going to continue. Lee, you say things are getting better. But do you, do, not, do you deny that the American dream is starting your own business without the government getting involved and taxing you? from here to eternity, do you deny that it's harder to achieve the American dream now than it used to be? No, I think that, you know, I, I wouldn't, I, first of all, it's easier to start a business. Taxes are lower than they were 20, 30 years ago. It's and easier now. The Have you seen the, ta the tax wants. code is a lot bigger. But, the regulatory code is a lot bigger. But well, what listen, about where taxes always, are going to have to go? a free market. Go ahead, yeah, hey, listen, well, yeah, the bottom yeah, line is, well, go yeah, look yeah, at the statistics on, about ahead. the last hundred years when we've gone up in marginal tax rate. And, you know, six out of the last ten times, the market went up the year before and the year after taxes were raised. And so I think that we have to separate out what Peter's talking about, which is a long-term problem with the type of no, you know, it's things not a that are happening right now anymore. that are healthy. It's a short-term it's yeah. a short-term problem. Listen, we're, we're, what are we going to do with interest rates? Peter's turn to respond. Years, Peter, go ahead. We've been right on the 10 years, what, but what, not over there. What are we going to do if interest rates spike up? I mean, look at the yields on the tips now. You know, they're, they're, they're going at a negative rate. You know, I, even though I think the CPI way understates inflation, inflation is a huge problem. The cost of living is going to go up. What are we going to do with a massive debt financed with T-bills if short-term interest rates spike up to 5 or 10%? What are we going to do? Because they're not, because there's a global 
shortage what do you mean of they're not free assets and everybody no, wants to but talk about but the treasury and fuel. you know the, for quite frankly we can change our ways the, hey we can eat less and we can buy a vault gm needs the business the, the, but when you the look treasury at the end of the is, day i understand there's inflation but there's too many people who want those risk-free assets because you're right no, but, peter there's slow growth and so that risk free stocks aren't there treasuries, of, the fed is not the on, reason why treasuries low. okay it's hold because on there's again, too many treasuries we started with lee we Tre only have time for one more response peter you go ahead. Treasuries are not risk free. That's the problem. And when people realize just how risky treasuries are, nobody is going to want to hold them. That is the problem. Lee Munson, Peter Schiff. By the way, Lee, nobody is buying a vault right now. Not many people anyway. That's part of the problem. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Guys, good to see you. Thank you very much. Terrific.